So good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, again for one uh, seminar, another seminar of the Instituto de Astrofisica de Andalucía in Granada, in Spain. And uh, today we will have the talk by Dr. Mark Klein Bolt. He will talk about Africa Millimeter Telescope on behalf of the EHT and AMT team. So Dr. Mark, Dr. Mark uh, Klein Bolt is the managing director and co-founder of the Radboud uh, Radio Lab of the Radboud uh, University, Nick Megan, and assistant professor of the Department of Astrophysics. The Radboud Radio Lab, which now consists of about 20 staff members, aims at developing instrumentation for space and ground-based astronomy. And projects are started in close collaboration with research institutes and industry partners with a strong focus on technological innovation. Dr. Klein Bolt is the project director of the Africa Millimeter Telescope in Namibia, which will be realized to become part of the Global Event Horizon Telescope Network and the team of the RRL is leading the effort for the upgrade and installation of the BLBI equipment and the BLBI monitor of the EHT. In addition, Dr. Kleinvold is the uh, deputy PI of the radio astronomy payload of the Chinese Lunar Chang 4 mission, which is the Dutch contribution to the first ever landing on the lunar far side and the only space-based radio observatory for low-frequency radio astronomical research. Finally, together with uh, Professor Bentum, Dr. Kleinvold is the director of the Beautiful Center for Astronomical Instrumentation, a collaboration between the Rabo University and the Technical University of Heinhoven. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Mark, for uh, accepting this invitation for this seminar. And uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks a lot for the introduction. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm sitting here also in a small room uh, with uh, with the team here at the department, which is really fun. Uh, it's much better than only talking to Zoom. Uh, so I hope everyone can hear me well. Um, in the introduction, I think it was already said uh, a little bit what we do. Uh, I'll, I'll touch briefly on the radio lab as well in the coming slides, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the extension of the EHT uh, with the Africa Millimeter Telescope. And I'm doing this, giving this presentation on behalf of the team in Nijmegen, the, the science team led by, uh, by Professor Heiner Falke, who's also the PI of the EHT, uh, or the AMT project, uh, and also many of the scientists in the Netherlands that are involved in the AMT project. So uh, just to, uh, as a quick reminder, the, the radio lab team is mostly involved in the, in the technical work in preparing, uh, let's say, the, the coming of the telescope in the mid year on the Gamsberg mountain, because that's what the AMT telescope is. Now, uh, very quickly, um, uh, I think it was already said, um, we are part of the Radboud University in Nijmegen in the Netherlands, uh, part of the Faculty of Science, and actually we are, we are part of the Department of Astrophysics, and the radio lab is, uh, is consists of about uh, 20 people right now uh, with a mixed background in engineering uh, and astronomy. Uh, and uh, what we do is we focus on the development of instrumentation for space uh, and for ground-based uh, ins uh, uh, yeah, inst instruments. Um, and we do a lot of the design work and the prototyping and testing. And then for the actual production, we work together with companies or other research institutes. And then we are again involved in the, in, let's say, the, the, the testing of that, also the implementation, the commissioning, and, and uh, also the operations of instruments. And just to give you a, a, a quick uh, overview of projects that we do, the Africa Millimeter Telescope and the EHT, we were, we were part of that, of course. I'll talk about that later. We've uh, established a, a small array of telescopes uh, in Chile on La Silla. It's called Black Gem. These are uh, optical telescopes, three of them that do follow ups, optical follow ups of gravitational wave events. We are uh, involved in the extension of the Pierre J Observatory. Uh, in Argentina, um, and as was mentioned, we are also uh, the, leading the efforts of having a, uh, a low-frequency radio telescope on the Chinese mission, the Chang'e 4 mission, which is the 
uh, is a, the, the complete mission was uh, the first ever landing on the far side of the moon. And we had the opportunity to place a radio antenna on the um, communication satellite, the relay satellite that is behind the moon all the time. And this was a, is a precursor for uh, a, an upcoming um, a real uh, radio telescope and array on the far side of the moon. And that's actually something that we are also leading. My team is also leading um, uh, an effort that we're uh, collaborating with, with ESA in a topical team on the, the development of a design of a, a radio telescope on the far side of the moon. Um, and we build, so we build instrumentation and, and I show there a little rocket that's flying off in space. I saw there's a rocket in front of this building as well, which is quite similar. And this is actually uh, what, what got the radio lab started. So this was the first payload that we built with a small team uh, for a student project uh, in, in, at the Technical University of Delft, uh, where they built their own rocket and they le needed a payload. And I thought, oh, let's try to do that. And it was the first time when we actually had actual hardware that was built that was you know, flown almost into space, came back and was still functioning and did some tests there. And it was quite impressive. And I think that actually got many of these things started. Um, but it's it's because of the support that we want to give to the EHT, uh, that's, that was the main reason for having the radio lab. But let's focus uh, uh, mostly now on, on the Africa Millimeter Telescope. And I'll, uh, what I'm going to do is this, is, this is not going to be a science talk. This is going to be a talk about the project itself because there are many different aspects to this project, ranging from technical to science to political uh, and, and even diplomatic. Um, uh, and when you build a telescope in another country, there's a lot of things you have to consider and, and we're facing them every day and, and, and problems arise out of the blue uh, on, on issues that you never expected would be an issue before. So when I give this talk to, um, to let's say to more uh, less trained audience, uh, I'll, I'll explain usually that we do this project because of the, 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 the key science um, uh, being part of the EHT. We do this because it's, it's, a unique, it's going to be a unique telescope in Africa and there's spin-off opportunities for the country itself and there's education and outreach uh, opportunities for, for the country. So um, when we talk about, about the, 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 you know, the, the big science thing, of course the EHT is there and the AMT will provide uh, a missing link and extension to the network. And I'll, 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 uh, I'll of course dig into that a little bit more deeper in the remaining of this talk. And the other thing is that uh, building a telescope in Namibia uh, at millimeter wavelength, sensitive at millimeter wavelengths, is uh, this will uh, be a unique telescope in the whole of Africa and also at that location. So it will be the only telescope of its kind in Africa. And for Namibia, it provides a lot of opportunities, not only to have their own research group uh, grown, you know, they have their own facility. The idea is that the Namibian partner, in this case, the University of Namibia, will in the end operate uh, the telescope, maintain the telescope. So it will be their facility. And of course, we will have the dedicated time for the EHT, but the Namibians can you know, develop their own project, uh, an own program with that. And that for them gives a unique opportunity to develop that science team, to develop that knowledge and be part of other uh, big projects like the SKA and the AVN, the Africa VLBI network. Um, the other thing that, that, that we try to do, uh, which is, has a spin-off in the country itself, is you can use a telescope like this as a showcase for technologies. Like if you think about it, uh, we want to build a telescope in a remote location where there's hardly any facilities. So having a project related to this, the, building the telescope on, for instance, green energy, you can think about wind, or you can think about solar projects, or you can think about hydrogen project. That's really interesting because we can be the user. We can be an example user, uh, putting really hard requirements on uh, those systems. And then if it works for that, it also works for a remote hospital or it works for a, a remote village that, that needs power as well. So you can use a project like this to also boost that development. And that's one of the things that we try to do with local partners. So what we want to do is have local partners that can, can participate in this, can actually lead those projects. Uh, for instance, the, the green energy one, where they, if they need knowledge, we can try to get that from maybe from partners in, uh, in the Netherlands that have experience with that. So that's a really interesting connection. And then finally, and I want to, oh, sorry, that went a bit quick. Uh, I want to go into the, uh, the education and outreach part. 
because we had the feeling then when we started this project from the start immediately, when you want to build a, a telescope in a country and you say, okay, this is going to be your telescope as well, and you, you can use it for your own science, uh, and, and, and then you walk away, that doesn't really work, right? So you have to start building a, uh, let's say, a next generation of engineers and scientists who are going to use this. And then when I thought about this, if you do that, you want to do that, you have to start really young. You have to start with the kids that go to, uh, uh, to kindergarten, to, to, uh, to, uh, to their schools. They, they want to, you want to engage them. You want to make them part of this. You want to show to them that this thing will be there in the future. And if they want, they can be part of it. So that's a really important uh, aspect of this, of this project. Um, and and uh, I mean, the, what we call a social impact program, which is related to this AMT project, uh, is running in parallel. And, and that has a couple of uh, elements. And one of them is the mobile planetarium. There's a fellowship and uh, a scholarship program and an international exchange program. So that's all part of the complete funding that we wanna have. Uh, the fellowship program, uh, there's an interesting uh, development there because we actually raised uh, 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 funding uh, for the first fellowship, um, uh, the first fellowship student to start a PhD student in Namibia. And, uh, and he will start actually probably this month or ne next month. So I'm really happy he's going to be working on the AMT project in Namibia, supported by uh, the team in the Netherlands. He's going to do much of the, the site testing measurements, putting the equipment there, but also being involved in the simulations. Uh, so what will be the, uh, let's say, the effect of the AMT on the overall image quality, for instance. So he will be involved in that as well. And that's really interesting. And he will also be involved in the mobile planetarium project. Now, just explaining a little bit, this is a project that we have in the Netherlands for, for schools. So we have, I think, three of these mobile planetaria, which are inflatable domes, where uh, up to 30 kids or so can go inside. There's a big beamer in the middle and someone giving a presentation. And these are dedicated presentations for, for kids at any age. And um, uh, this is a well, uh, I mean, real, really good uh, running show in the Netherlands where we go to schools for one day, usually, and you get all the classes to go through this. So you, you, you reach the younger ones and the older, older kids. And uh, this is not only about uh, engaging them for astronomy, because the amount of kids you get for astronomy is, is usually very small. I mean, people are interested in it, but it's, it's also about giving them an image of their universe, of their world. And in Namibia, uh, what struck me was that uh, where the kids in the Netherlands they talk about the, the planets and the stars and, and maybe the galaxy, if you're lucky. Uh, in Namibia, the kids were just amazed about the amount of water on our planet, mm -hmm. right? They, they hadn't seen that. So what we did in the beginning of these shows, we zoom out from the location where we were. So you see it uh, as projected on the, on the dome and the inside, you see, for instance, the Windhoek area, which is the main capital of Namibia, and you zoom out and you see the desert. And then at some point you start seeing the oceans and all the kids go like, oh, what's this? Where, why is all this water? Why don't we have it? And I think that, so it helps them giving an image of the, of the world they live in. I think that's really important. So uh, this is a proven concept and um, we have a dedicated planetarium in Namibia already. We were waiting for getting trainers to Namibia to train the, the, the local team to use the planetarium. And because of COVID, that wasn't possible. Uh, we are now making plans to restart this thing uh, uh, even in, uh, as soon as in, in May of this year. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and this is really, I would say, spearheading our project because uh, it has raised a lot of attention in Namibia as well. And we're getting a lot of partners that are interested in, in supporting this and, and providing funding for the tours that we make, but also for the education material that we want to create uh, alongside this project that we leave behind for the, for the trainers and for the students at the, the various schools that we want to go to. And this is just an impression of some of the uh, locations we went in Namibia, uh, including the University of Namibia itself. Okay, uh, let's go uh, back to the AMT a little bit. Uh, and talk a bit about science. Um, of course, uh, when you develop a project like this, uh, when you think about it, um, uh, what is the, let's say, the purpose of the telescope that you want to do, you have to select uh, one major science case, as we were just discussing before this presentation. Uh, you have to have the requirements from that major science case drive your design. And every choice you, you have to make in that whole process 
has to come back to what is the science goal. And you also always have to check, uh, do I go left or right? This really depends on is the science, or, uh, uh, can, can we do the science, right? In the end, that's, that's what we want to do. And I think for us, the AMT, the leading science case is of course the EHP science. So, uh, but there's a lot of extra science that you can add to this project, which gives you the opportunity to do more science, but also to get more partners in. Huh? So, so you have a, a facility available there with a certain performance, which could you know, help uh, other science cases as well. So we are looking into this and, 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 and developing that as we go along, uh, uh, getting in more partners. And what you see is that uh, uh, you know, if you have a dedicated millimeter radio uh, telescope in Namibia, it will be a unique, unique telescope in the whole of Africa. Which could, you know, help in in uh, multi wavelengths. Uh, uh, is there a question or <laughs> no? Uh, we could help in multi wavelength uh, observations at, at uh, even with facilities in Namibia, like the HES telescopes, which are really close by. Uh, but you could extend that even to X ray and gamma ray observations. And um, so there's there's a, there's a lot of science you can do there. Um, and uh, uh, for instance, the transient detection uh, of, of transient sources for myself is an interesting topic per se because uh, when you think about for instance the HT science when for the first time you're able to detect or uh, to measure um, the effects of, 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 of black holes at these scales uh, and, and under extreme gravity conditions this is the first time when we see accretion flowing into the black hole and we know of course of many black holes stellar size black holes that do the same thing, X-ray binaries, for instance. So you could you can make a link to that. And with the AMT, we are also able to do these transient detections of, of, of X-ray binaries. So I'm not saying we can do the imaging of black holes, but we can see the radio emission and the, actually the millimeter emission coming from that. And, um, and, and just think about the fact that millimeter waves will come before the radio wave comes. So you can even use it as a, as, as a trigger. Uh, for other observations. I think that's really interesting. And for us in the Netherlands, it also, you know, this connects also to many of the uh, theoretical science that we're doing in Nijmegen, but also in, uh, in Amsterdam, the University of Amsterdam, the theoretical work on jet formation and particle, particle accelerations. And you can, you can test this, uh, you, we can now see it on large scales in, in, in supermassive black holes, but you can use the same theory for the for the standard size size uh, black holes for the X-ray binaries, where uh, similar processes happen, but of course on completely different timescales. So I think that's uh, uh, the, the science goals that we have. Uh, there were a few other things which I won't uh, go into detail right now, but uh, this is uh, giving you a little bit an overview of how we see the science program and wh where we focus on. Uh, we have about fifty percent of the time that's really, really going into the EHT science. Or, or even VLBI science, um, uh, the black hole monitoring and the transient uh, science. And then there's 50% of open, open time that uh, could be used for, for, let's say, the Namibian team in, uh, in Namibia, at the University of Namibia, to, to develop their own science projects. It could be part of the, let's say, the AVN or the SKA uh, science that they do. Um, and there could be part of buy-ins that say, okay, we want to have guaranteed time uh, so we, we invest something into your project. So we're basically selling observing time. Uh, and there's of course the, the opportunities, uh, the TOs that, you know, that could uh, uh, go up to about 20% uh, or so of its time. Um, now, the science of the, of the, uh, the EHT, and, and I don't have to explain uh, that to you probably in this room, uh, uh, it comes back to, uh, let's say, the first predictions of, of, of the fact that the black hole shadow is there and that with a, uh, a telescope the size of the Earth, in principle, you get the resolution to see that shadow and to see the event horizon. And uh, then when you see that, when you have that actual image, then you can really start to learn about uh, the physics behind it. You know? so, uh, this gives us the image and also the research that we do, the comparison that we, that we have with the complicated models, gives us the first time to really test GR. Huh? So this is one of the things that we want to do. But you have to also consider that for astrophysics, um, things are moving, are changing in time, right? So we don't only want to have an image, we need to have a movie, right? We need to have time-resolved images because 
the astrophysics is changing all the time. And that's, that's something that you have to consider. So the AMT could add to that. It could add to, uh, to making movies instead of just making images. And um, let me just quickly go into um, uh, and that story about what the AMT can do for the EHD. Now, on the left-hand side, you see the, the, act, the, the current uh, EHT network. And on the right-hand side, you see the famous image. And you see how, as the Earth rotates, how the image quality changes, which really shows that you need a telescope, probably somewhere in Africa, to improve on the image quality, right? Because more, more telescopes are needed to get the better image. Now, so the first thing you say is, okay, we can add the telescope in Africa um, uh, because of this, you know, improving that image quality, because of the redundancy, basically, right? If you add more telescopes, then some of them can cannot be part of the network every now and then, and the AMT could cover for that. But adding more telescopes to the networks in general gives you more baselines, and then you get a better filling factor. So the baselines and the filling factor are an important argument. The location, of course, is important because uh, from Namibia, you get to see Sagittarius A star right or coming right overhead. You can observe it for a very long time, and that's really important. And then uh, it's the dynamical imaging uh, because the yeah, astrophysics so is changing over time. That's really important. So let me quickly go into that a little bit. Uh, adding baselines, you see the, uh, uh, unfortunately, the right hand uh, is just uh, an image, not a movie. Uh, on the left hand side, you see the case for M87, how the, uh, the addition of the AMT changes the, uh, the amount of uh, uh, the, the, the improvement of the film factor. And for, for the case of Sagittarius A star, the effect is even bigger. And you can see in yellow here, the, uh, in addition to red, the extra connections the AMT uh, creates to the really high sensitive observatories that we have. And that's a really important fact. What we sometimes uh, see in these simulations and, and things that we do is that that simple, small, smallish telescope in the media could, could also give redundancy to really large facilities. And come back mm -hmm. to that later as well. But this is important. Um, the, uh, the visibilities is an important one. Here you see uh, various sites, uh, um, um, uh, also including the Gumsberg area. You see sites in Europe and the Americas and Africa. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, uh, you see what could be the effect uh, for Sagittarius a star of adding the AMT, uh, and that's because it comes right overhead. Um, for uh, M87, the effect is a bit less, uh, uh, and what you see in both sides is that, that the biggest added value is in, in the first half uh, of the observing time. And, and I think that that effect is, is best seen here in the improvement of the dynamical imaging. This is the improvement of the filling factor that you had. Now, the Sagittarius A star uh, time scales is in the order of minutes, right? That's different from, from M87. So for, for that, it's really important to have longer time observations. Now, if you go to, let's say, the first 10 hours, uh, then you see that adding the AMT gives a huge improvement of the filling factor and hence also of this uh, dynamical imaging, the possibilities for that. And uh, adding a telescope on the Canary Islands will give an even bigger, you know, an, an additional uh, effect. So that's really needed. And you get to that, to that level that you have uh, not so much for the Eastern array, but for the Western array as well. Now, the redundancy, how do you, uh, si how do we simulate that? This is, a, I think, an earlier simulation made by Frank Hulos, where we take a model and then we, we uh, do the calculation to see how, what kind of image do we get out of this when we include the AMT, uh, Apex, Alma, if we remove them and see what is the, what is the uh, effect on the image quality. And, and you see here that when you, when you add the AMT, uh, that can have a huge effect. So in principle, the AMT, because of the baselines and its location, it can provide redundancy for a site like Alma. Of course, not in terms of collecting area, because Alma is much, much bigger, of course. But because of that, because of its excellent location, it could provide this. And uh, I think another interesting, uh, um, uh, um, let's say, effect of the redundancy of adding the AMT, especially for the Eastern Array, so for the, those first 10 hours, you see that, that mm -hmm. the, the difference between uh, no AMT and an AMT is quite significant. And, and I think this is, this is one of the most recent uh, um, uh, analysis that was done 
uh, by uh, a new PhD student by, from, from Heiner Falke. Uh, and you see here how you get from the model to, to, these, uh, to these images. So I think and that's- that's for five days, isn't it? Yes, this is for five days, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I should have added that. Um, yeah, one other thing that, that I mentioned a few times, um, I, I spoke about the, the AVN, the Africa VLBI network, um, which is basically the extension of the SKA uh, VLBI extension of adding uh, extra telescopes throughout Africa. Now this is this AVN is a plan. Currently, there is uh, the hard to base observatory <laughs> Uh, and there are plans for adding other telescopes in, uh, in Africa. And Namibia was one of those plans as well. Now, um, what we are currently trying to see and discussing with the AVN team is, uh, can we join forces here? Because could we have an AVN type receiver also part of the design? And, and actually the baseline design accommodates for that. That's what we're trying to do. Because uh, the AVN wanted to place a telescope not on the mountain, but next to the mountain near the HES site, or actually at the HES site. Uh, they don't need to go to a higher elevation, we do, uh, but they don't need to do that. So this is, this is one of the things that we're trying to, 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 to see whether we could join forces there and whether for we, the AMT could be the, the node for the AVN uh, in, in Namibia, the Namibian node. Um, yeah, so, uh, let me talk a little bit about um, uh, the site and why we selected the site and, and, and those kind of things, a little bit of the baseline design that we currently have. Now, um, first of all, the idea was uh, uh, at some point that we would uh, either buy a new telescope or, uh, and that's currently the baseline still, use uh, reuse a, a existing telescope because it gives us a huge, uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, let's say, uh, reduction in cost. <laughs> um, it's either refurbishing an existing telescope or taking the parts of that telescope to make a new one, which could also give a cost reduction. And we're currently uh, uh, discussing with ESO the details of reusing the, the, the CES telescope, which is currently decommissioned uh, in La Silla in Chile. So that's the baseline design for now. Uh, now we changing this telescope into, let's say, a, a modern Noema type dish. Uh, this could be done by the team at Iran, uh, is, is uh, challenging. Uh, it has risks. <laughs> you know, as we discussed uh, earlier today, uh, when you open up a telescope like that, you're going to find, uh, uh, you find something that you never expected. So maybe uh, the mechanics are completely ruined and you have to change it again. Now, the, the, the costs for uh, building a new telescope is still much higher than doing the refurbishment, but it's not far off, right? Uh, so, so you have to we have to really find out where, uh, yeah, what what the best trade-off is, uh, in, also in terms of risk. So that's one of the things that we're currently investigating with the team, uh, the IRAM team uh, uh, in Grenoble, to see whether what the best option would be, taking parts from this or completely uh, refurbishing it, but. In the end, the goal is to get a Noema type of dish uh, uh, and also robotically uh, operated at the site in Namibia. Now, on the right hand side, you see uh, a, uh, a photograph uh, um, from the Gamsberg uh, mountain. So this is a naturally flat top mountain, um, quite big. I think it's uh, uh, three kilometers, three to four kilometers by 500 meters wide. Um, there's a couple of uh, uh, facilities on the mountain, not much. There's a telecommunication mast uh, that uh, sometimes requires a bit of maintenance. So sometimes some people go up, but uh, not a lot. And there's a couple of amateur uh, telescopes that are every now and then used by, uh, by the amateurs that come uh, to uh, actually another farm, which is close by the mountain. Uh, an astro farm where, where people go uh, to, to, to do stargazing. And sometimes they go up the mountain. But on the right hand side, you see the, the wiggle, the red uh, line going up, which is uh, what we call the road, which is not really a road yet, but it's more like an indication for a direction. Uh, this is the biggest challenge that, that we currently have because uh, using a big four by four, you can go up the road, you can come up the mountain, but bringing, uh, for instance, parts of the SES telescope uh, on that road is almost impossible right now. 
Uh, and uh, that's not only because of the, this last stretch going up the mountain, but also reaching the mountain. There's a, there's a few very narrow places where you have to go between the rocks that probably the, the, the let's say the, the, the dish parts or, and even the, the, the mount of the telescope are too big. So that has to be really changed. So going to that mountain is really a big challenge. Um, we've investigated um, a couple of places on the mountain where the telescope could be located. So there was a uh, environmental impact study done uh, with a team in, in Namibia um, because there's, uh, there's special plants that grow on the mountain. So it's, it's a unique environment and we have to be careful there. You cannot just place the telescope anywhere. And we found a few places where we could put the telescope where those, uh, those plants do not grow. Uh, and also uh, we had to make sure that from a distance, the view of the mountain doesn't really change that much, right? That, that all of a sudden everyone sees the telescope. Uh, so we placed the telescope almost in the middle of the mountain so that from a distance you do not see it. And actually, to be, to be, to be honest, the telecommunication mast is, is going to be bigger or is bigger than our telescope. It's higher. And, and from uh, recent pictures, actually, and ones that we made in November, from a distance from the main road, uh, I could see the telecommunication mast uh, on a high resolution image. You could see it from but with the naked eye, you cannot see it. Um, so this is the Gamsberg mountain uh, in the baseline design. This is where we want to go. And this is, is of course, driven by the, the science requirements. Huh? Uh, the higher we go, the lower the water vapor content, the better image qualities we get uh, in, in the end. But as I explained to you, going up the mountain is, is not without any risks and, and is quite challenging uh, and quite costly as well. So from a project point of view, uh, there has to be a trade-off. Do we invest the 6 million euros for that science or can we do the same kind of science or similar kind of science at another location where we do have facilities? And that's why we are also investigating the HES site which is not so far off from the, uh, the, the Gamsberg area. And actually last November, we went there to, uh, to investigate possible locations where a telescope could be erected. And uh, uh, so we of course have to also discuss that with uh, the owner of the HES site, one of the farms uh, close by uh, and with the HES team itself as well. So this is just uh, in, at an early phase, but uh, the location uh, at HES or on the mountain is the biggest trade-off that we're currently doing in the project. Um, well, here we have uh, some specifications for the, uh, which are part of the AMT uh, design, the baseline design. Uh, I won't go too much into the details, but we'll have first generation receivers and maybe uh, second generation receivers as well. This could come from, you know, additional funding from partners that come in or from funding that we we ourselves uh, uh, get in. Um, uh, you have to realize that, that the project went through its preliminary design review already a couple of years ago. So many of the things that I'm explaining here that I'm dis discussing here are coming from that preliminary design review. And currently we're working towards a, a, a Delta PDR, Delta review on the, on the location itself. So really, you know, can we, do we have to put it on or next to the mountain? And that will be followed by a critical design review where hopefully we have all the funding in place and we're really close right now, uh, but also technically uh, we have all the details worked out uh, completely. And, and so this is just a, 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 an overview. Now, um, we've, we still need to put test equipment on the Gamsberg mountain. And that's, that's a, a big issue that we currently have. It was related uh, to many uh, different aspects. <laughs> uh, first of all, there was a problem of getting the equipment in the country. There was a problem of getting um, uh, the experts in the country to put uh, to install the test equipment. Uh, this was all related to, to, to COVID, unfortunately, and to uh, uh, politics. And now uh, there's still also the issue of, of, um, of uh, getting access over land of farmers, of neighboring farmers. Uh, and that's something that's currently being resolved. But um, uh, so then we hopefully can get uh, those radiometers and maybe even for, for the first, uh, for the next upcoming EHC run on the mountain. Uh, this is just an indication of uh, the seasonal variation in uh, uh, the uh, precipitable uh, uh, water, uh, just the rainfall. 
um, uh, 20 day uh, medians um, uh, where we see the measurements in Windhoek, the main capital uh, of Namibia, La Silla, Paranal, uh, and uh, the three uh, black dots are in situ measurements on the Gamsberg mountain itself. And there you see that, that uh, for this measurement, uh, the, the Gamsberg area is really uh, quite close to what you get uh, at, at uh, high class facilities. So that's, uh, that's, that's an important measurement that, and that's of course just water. We also need to do the radiometer measurements. Um, here we have um, uh, the uh, annual transmittance. Um, uh, this was done from, uh, uh, this was done in 2015 and also based on and compared to measurements that was done by ESO in the past, in the, in, uh, in the 1990s. Um, the Gumsberg area, the Gumsberg mountain was selected as, uh, as a possible site for the VLT. Uh, so ESO has performed a lot of measurements at that time. And, and uh, we've compared that to, uh, to what we uh, currently can do. And this is giving uh, um, the transmittance um, uh, for, uh, for that location over the various frequencies. Uh, and you can see uh, that we have uh, let's say uh, acceptable uh, uh, VLBI weather for 50% of the year. Now it changes over time. And then you can see, of course, that there's a wet season in Namibia, although wet we have to put between brackets, but still nevertheless, there is a, there's a seasonal variation. And that, uh, but, but we also see that for uh, the, the months of, uh, of, of, let's say April uh, and July, uh, the conditions are, are, are better uh, than for January and March. But this is important when you think about the AMT as the extension of the EHD, you have to think about the future of the EHD. And when are we going to do those measurements? When are we going to do the coordinated measurements? So we have to have measurements like this throughout the whole year to really select uh, or to find out whether the AMT can give that contribution. So that this all comes into play when you think about the actual location of the, of the telescope because you can do these kind of measurements or these kind of calculations for the mountain and also for the HES site, and those will be different. Mm -hmm. And there will be seasonal variation over that as well. So you have to take that into consideration when you really talk about, uh, uh, the, the, let's say the long-term future plans of the EHD. Now, now just a few other uh, um, uh, images on, uh, and plans for the, uh, the refurbishment of the, uh, the, the, the CES telescope or the use of parts for the CES telescope uh, to give you an idea. On the left-hand side is a, is a CES uh, as it currently stands uh, in Lucia, which is, I would say, in mint condition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you come closer, you would see that some, some of the panels need to be replaced or refurbished. Uh, when you look at uh, electronics, um, uh, I've been, uh, I've not been on this telescope, but I've been in La Silla uh, at another telescope. And there's a lot of rodents and, and birds that come into your telescope and that, that eat on the cables and destroy stuff. And there's a lot of bird droppings as well. And so it's, uh, it doesn't get better over time. So electronics uh, needs to be replaced anyway. Uh, but the mechanical stuff, uh, that, that needs to be tested, whether that's still uh, performing uh, well. Um, but this, you know, the, the situation that we have is that this can either be completely refurbished or we can use parts to make things like that, like the ones that we currently have uh, uh, at Iran. And these are actually pictures that I took myself when I was there. Uh, so uh, at the time when we were there, the 13th uh, dish, uh, Noema dish is standing inside the huge workspace that they have at uh, Plateau de Beer, which is quite insane because you can really drive the telescope inside on the railway. It goes inside, I've seen it happen. They can actually place two telescopes at the same time in that workspace. Mm -hmm. Now, when we think about um, building a telescope on the mountain, we actually need a workspace like this, right? Because you need to establish the whole thing there, put it together and test it. So that's really needed not only to make the telescope, but also to the refurbishment. So what we see in, uh, uh, at, the, at, at the site in uh, Plateau de Beur is that, that these telescopes go out of uh, operations and go into maintenance on a regular schedule. Right? So and you really have to have that facility. So when you think about placing a telescope on the mountain, you also need to think about those things and you have to build that as well. So that is really costly. 
and complicated. Um, sorry, if I'm, I have to apologize for the quality of this slide, but uh, so we are we are making a, a, a refurbishment plan for the for the telescope um, for a couple of years, uh, and you can see this will take uh, at least uh, four to five years, um, um, uh, and and this will you know this will be that you take elements from the telescope, maybe sometimes directly bring them to Namibia. And some of them need to be replaced or refurbished, and, and you have to bring them to, to Europe, where you do that refurbishment. And then you have to bring it then to the media and bring everything together. So that's really quite an operation. And this, of course, all adds to all the costs that you, you have to consider for, for building the telescope there. And, and compare that to making a new telescope and just shipping that to the media and, and putting it together there. So that's completely different. Um, this is a, 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 well, maybe I can skip that a little bit, but the, the, the important part here is um, we've made a, a first draft uh, design on, on the operations of the whole telescope and all the facilities that we need. Um, uh, and uh, the, I think the, the biggest thing that we want to establish here is a robotic telescope. So that requires uh, dedicated software um, uh, and that's it's not a, it's not an easy thing to do, but you see this uh, many of the facilities that we're currently building, also the ones that uh, we've done in the radio lab, uh, things like the Black Gem Array on La Silla, is also a robotically operated telescope. So there's hardly any human interaction anymore, and of course that would help a lot with this facility. If you and that's completely different from what currently, for instance, at Plato de Burr is happening. Uh, where you have a dedicated team working around the clock on 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 these on the telescope. That's a that's a completely different kind of project. So that's why we are thinking about doing this, uh, but that requires good software and and also a very good design. Um, we are still uh, uh, looking at options for the front end, the back end, uh, and and this was uh, to give you an idea on the antenna uh, design. Uh, we also thought about uh, other options for, for, for purchasing an antenna, but that comes with enormous costs. Um, mm -hmm. And again, you know, uh, we've now uh, had the, 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 uh, the CES as the, as the baseline. Um, one of the things that, uh, that, that I want to touch upon very briefly is, is, uh, is governance. So how do you operate such a telescope and where do you put it and who will be the owner and all those kind of things. These are things that you have to think about when you start doing that, especially in, in, a, in a new location. Um, so we make a distinction between uh, the design and construction phase and the actual uh, operational phase of the telescope. And uh, for the design and construction phase, uh, there will be a project board. Um, uh, and there's of course a, a really important uh, science committee that, that, that drives the design that provides some scientific requirements. And then there's the, uh, uh, the management team that has the technical teams underneath that. So this is how we, we have uh, uh, organized the project right now. And what we need to establish still in Namibia is, is a, um, a, let's say, uh, the foundation, the AMT foundation, where the two main partners, the Harvard University and the University of Namibia will take part because they will need to be the owner of the telescope. Because in the end, the project needs to hire people, needs to pay bills, or the parts and stuff like that. And that has to go through a legal entity. So that's what we want to uh, need to set up in, in the coming months in, in Namibia. And uh, in the end, um, for the actual phase of the operations, there will be a consortium board uh, uh, that has underneath them, a, there's still a management team where technical things are happening like maintenance and operations and scheduling. And there's still the science committee with the, the key science program that determines uh, how the science program is, is, is uh, made, uh, how much time is ad, uh, allocated to certain science objectives. Um, and where the AMT Foundation will be the owner of the telescope facility, uh, the consortium board will be probably be the owner of the AMT data. Now, just uh, uh, an indication of the of the current timeline. Um, uh, as I said, there's a lot of aspects that are part of this project. Uh, this gives you just an indication of, of, of how much time things would take. 
Um, we had the PBR review in, in, in 2019. Uh, we are currently considering having a delta on that PBR um, uh, at the end of this year, which is not in this schedule, and then having a critical design review uh, by the end of, uh, of this year, probably beginning of next year. And from that point on, we could start really building and working with the telescope. So from that point on, we could start uh, uh, taking the SES telescope apart, uh, doing the refurbishment, uh, working on, on, on the transport of those components, but also working on the local infrastructure, because those things have to run in parallel, because at some point when the telescope is ready, the road needs to be ready, and then the, 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 you know, the local facilities need to be ready. So that's a lot of things that need to happen. Uh, and then in between, you have, of course, also the, the procurement of instruments uh, that, that need to be, uh, that has to be uh, done in advance, they have to be built and delivered on time. Um, and uh, the fundraising is something that continues all the time. <laughs> um, to give you, a, I have a few words on that later as well. And then the education outreach program is something I mentioned already. Uh, so, but this uh, just shows you that when we start, when you get the green light to start at the end of, uh, let's say, this year, beginning of next year, we have first light uh, somewhere in 2026. So that's uh, that's the time frame that you're looking at. And, and you wish you could do it earlier, right? Because everything I said before about doing the science and giving the extra uh, to the EHT, uh, you would like to do it now, <laughs> but that's not possible. <laughs> but it takes time to build this. So um, uh, when, even when you think about the NGHT, for instance, as an example of you know uh, trying to create uh, many different sites uh, around the globe, this takes a lot of time. And, uh, and, and for, for each project, you have to consider, especially when you go to new locations, when there's no facilities, that you have to have all these, for instance, all the legal aspects of things and, and all the political aspects of things and the contacts within the government, uh, within the country to get support for getting equipment in, for, for arranging access to sites or, or whatever. Right? Getting support from the government uh, to do these kinds of things is really important, but it's a lot of effort and it takes a lot of time. So you should not underestimate that. Um, yeah, the funding. Building this whole thing, including everything, going up to the mountain, building the road, the facility, uh, doing the social impact program with the students, exchange programs, all the instrumentation, a lot, <laughs> is about 23 million euros. Right now, we have about 50% of that funding arranged. And this is uh, majorly, I mean, the, the major uh, uh, contribution to that is now coming from the Radboud University, which uh, end of last year, uh, um, gave us, uh, let's say, a contribution of about 12 million euros for the coming 10 years, which includes also a, 12 million, a 2 million investment in hardware. And the rest is really support and manpower to the teams in, at the Harvard University and the science team uh, uh, from Heine Falke and, and the technical team in the radio lab. So this is giving us, uh, 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 I would say, a major contribution to really make this project happen. This is really the game changer for us. Uh, before that time, we had uh, about 25% of all the funding there, but that would not be enough to start building when the technical design was approved at the CDR, right, at the end of this year. Um, so what we've also had is a minimal implementation plan. And uh, that's like um, a plan where we say, okay, what if we not, do not place a telescope on the mountain, but we put it at the HES site, because that's cheaper. And what if we focus only on EHT science? So we, we do not talk about other uh, science cases. We do not change the design because of those science cases. We do not purchase any instrumentation because of that. We only do EHT science and we operate the telescope only for that period. I mean, that's difficult, right? Because uh, then, you, you know, what do you do in the, in the, in the months in between? But uh, let's just assume that you do that. Then um, that, that plan, uh, uh, there's a lot of less money you need to get for that. Now, uh, that's about 10 million euros, and that's the money that we already have. So in principle, a bit more or less. In principle, um, 
if we get a green light technically at the CVR, we could execute the minimal implementation plan. So the minimal implementation plan is, is, is you know, something that we can start doing. And then in parallel, we can try to find the rest of the funding to go for the full scope or part of it, right? So we can always lose parts uh, along the way, but that will be the goal. So this is the minimal implementation plan that we have. And uh, we started this project um, with the idea Let's try to do it as they do it in the US. <laughs> try to get more uh, private funding in, right? And see whether we could raise money to do that. Now that, that's, in, in Europe, is really, really difficult to do. And uh, so where we started off by saying, oh, we should have uh, private funding, maybe for the uh, largest part of, of the whole uh, budget that we need, we now go uh, back to more, let's say, public funding where we apply for many uh, uh, European or, or the national programs to get funding in addition to the funding that we get from the Rutgers University, because it proves to be very challenging to get that private funding in. But it's still interesting. And, and what I've noticed is that, especially in the Netherlands, but also in the media, it's the social impact of this project. So not so much the pictures of black holes, because most people don't understand that, but it's the social impact on you know, showing technologies, using it as a, as a showcase or, or building capacity, training uh, kids. Uh, that's the thing that people like. And that's the thing that what they want to support. So for the social impact program, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we get some significant contributions uh, from, from private donors. Uh, currently, um, there's a couple of project risks that were involved, were identified uh, at, at the, uh, the last review, the preliminary design review. Um, uh, and I'm just giving you an overview of things here. The funding I have already discussed uh, that, that looks actually, you know, since the support of the government of the university came through, it looks really promising. Um, I also mentioned already a little bit uh, uh, the farmers around the mountain uh, that need to give us access over their land to get to the Gamsberg mountain. Uh, and also the agreement with Max Planck. Uh, so the Max Planck Association is owner of the top, uh, the summit of, of Hamsberg. And we have an agreement uh, for place and test equipment, but of course we need to have an agreement with putting the telescope there. So that's something that's, that is, uh, that is uh, uh, in progress and being discussed with Max Planck and with the farmers. Uh, and I hope, especially the farmer stuff can be solved pretty soon. Um, uh, the single dish uh, requirements, this was one of the requirements uh, of the risks that came from the review uh, that at about the time of the PDR, we focused really too much on the EHT science. So what we did, we started off this project saying, okay, we need to put the telescope there uh, at the computer for EHT science. So that's what we, what we did. And then the, the, the review board told us, but what are you going to do with the rest of the time? <laughs> Because you're not going to do each time, each science all the time, so you need to think about this. And and I think that was a kind of a wake up call for us. Uh, we knew that, of course, but didn't have time to do it. So we, we I think we made a lot of progress, or significant progress on that. So we have a an each, or we have a let's say a single dish science team of, of a couple of scientists that, that from from Europe and also Namibia that think about this kind of science and are really developing plans for that. That that in the end give requirements to the designer. So that, that works fine. Um, uh, I mentioned already Iran very briefly. Because we, we want to reuse the CES, we're considering a NOEMA type of telescope. And that for us really requires the support of Iran. And uh, although Iran uh, is very keen on supporting it, there's no official arrangement yet, right? I think uh, they could do it in principle eh? they're, they're, and they're interested in the project, but that has to be formally uh, agreed upon yet. And we're, you know, uh, looking into the design together and seeing what, what role they can take and how to run that. And then I think one of the things that we also need to think about, um, and this again comes to when you place a telescope on a new site, uh, are you doing a project? Uh, are, you, are you doing, uh, let's say, building one instrument or are you building a facility? And that's a completely different thing. Now, if we build a telescope on the mountain, put a road there, bring all the, all the infrastructure there, then we are opening up a facility. 
And because the Gamsberg is such a very nice location for doing astronomy, it's been identified like that for many years, we need to think about what, what other projects could go there. And then so the owner of that of the mountaintop becomes the owner of the facility. They need to think about what are they going to do. So this is another discussion that we as, as an AMT project have to have with the Max Planck Association. What is their position in there? Now, um, I touched upon, upon many uh, of these things already. This is uh, what we have as, as a current status. Uh, um, uh, we were much affected as a project by the COVID situation, as many people around the world were. So I'm not going to complain, uh, <laughs> but it's a it's a fact of life. Um, uh, one one of the things that we did during that time that we were not able to travel is try to arrange the funding, but also keep the political discussions going uh, with the people in the media. And I think that was still very good. Uh, and and uh, also plan, making the plans for the education and outreach thing really worked out very well. So I think in, in the meantime, when we were not able to travel, we did a lot of things uh, in the background and I'm really happy with that. But now that, that traveling is more, uh, looks like to be more of an option, I'm here right now. Um, uh, I hope to be back in Namibia a little bit more to push also for the, let's say the technical uh, things and much more. Um, uh, as I said, we're working towards uh, reviews uh, end of this year uh, to let's say the beginning of next year, which are really major for the project. And uh, uh, well, we have a good funding situation, but so that trade-off for the location needs to be made. Um, and one of the things that I want to touch upon very briefly is is uh, is um, the fact that we are building this, want to build this telescope in a in a region uh, which also has a historical meaning. Uh, to uh, to Namibia, and we are currently also investigating that. So we have been a student working on the history of uh, of the Kamsberg, and uh, in particular on the effects that uh, Hendrik Witboy, as a freedom fighter, fighting against the uh, the German um, uh, occupants of of Namibia, the uh, uh, colonizers, um, uh, the effects that he had on the region, and the fact that he stayed there. And I think we, as a project, should. Uh, include that in all the decisions that we made and, and be respectful of that. And that's one of the things that, uh, that we're doing, which makes this project also quite complicated. Um, I want to uh, basically stop here uh, showing, uh, um, and let's say, the support that we get. Uh, uh, this was uh, 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 during a review uh, in 2019, or a special event that we organized in Namibia where we met with the vice president of the country and uh, uh, we were introduced in the Namibian parliament uh, by the speaker of uh, the parliament, uh, who are both now uh, uh, claimed um, uh, or self-proclaimed supporters, ambassadors to the project. So this is the connection that we have to the Namibian government. Uh, and uh, But we also got a lot of support from, from companies and institutes uh, not only in Namibia, but also uh, uh, worldwide, uh, mostly in Europe, for this project. So I will stop here uh, and take any questions that are there. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, very nice work, very interesting. I like a lot of the pictures and, and project. So now the, the talk is open for questions. So. For the persons in the room, please, uh, Mark, tell me if there is a question there. And uh, if the sound is not good for the uh, person who made the question, please repeat it. Yeah, I can and for the people, the participants online, please raise your hand and I will let you uh, make the questions. I don't, yeah, I, uh, Jose has a question here. Okay, go on, yeah. Let me see if everybody can hear me and I'm going to speak a little bit louder. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Good, go on. All right, perfect. So first of all, uh, Mark, uh, thank you very much for dropping by in Granada. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Uh, it's wonderful to see that uh, the project is, 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 is funded already and then it's moving really along and it's just a beautiful thing. I, 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 want, I have a, a comment and a question. So uh, the comment is that uh, when I saw the UV coverage that you get uh, for uh, observations of Sagittarius, 
I saw that the, the, the UV coverage that uh, the telescope in Namibia provides it covers a lot of the critical lambda for Sage, which is where we do expect to see the, the first null for a 50 microsecond blah uh, shadow. Yes. So this is going to be absolutely fantastic yes. for Sage. I, I yeah. think it would be really an amazing yeah. thing. Uh, and, and secondly, uh, I was also thrilled with the UV coverage that used to offer the combined uh, in Namibia and Canary Islands. Yes. As you know, we are trying to. <laughs> To raise our telescope there. So, this is wonderful news. Actually, uh, uh, the, the site in Canary Islands is, is, is the best site in Europe for observations yes. of MH7. In Namibia, I think it's going to be it's definitely the best site for Sage. Right. So, when you combine the two yeah. of them, I think the, the, this provides a very, very, very important anchor for, yeah. for the uh, European part of the EHP and future NGEHP project. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's really wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, I, I completely agree with you. Um, I think that, that, I think we as European partners, we, we, have, uh, 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 we have to realize that we have to join forces now. Because uh, I think that well, uh, the, the efforts in the US are, are, are impressive. Uh, there's a lot of funding there for the design phase right now eh? and thinking about where to put the telescopes for the next phase of the EHD. And I think that we in Europe, we should also uh, show some leadership here and take the opportunity because we have projects like the one that you're trying to do on the Canary Islands, the one that we're trying to do in Namibia. And I think we should, you know, raise uh, awareness and, and support it all together. I think that's really important right now for the future of this kind of work. You know, you, you have to really think about, sometimes we get, we had uh, feedback on, on, on funding proposals where people said, but why do you need more telescopes now? Or why do you want to make an extension? Because you have the picture already of the black hole. Mm -hmm. And then we had to explain that this is the start of yeah. new science. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is the first image. And now we want to go further and really understand the physics behind it and the astrophysics behind it. And for that, projects like this are really needed. Yeah. That's really wonderful. Yeah. And, 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 delicately, and the question is, uh, is about the, the funding. I, I see, yeah. I mean, congratulations for this uh, extra funds from Radabao. This is really wonderful. Uh, it's, and I see for, for the option of, uh, of, of the full project, which is around yeah. 20 million. Yeah. So you're seeking more, you know, partners, I yeah. guess, and so on. So I, I see in this slide actually you have a, a lot of possible partners. So uh, I mean, yeah. I, I just, you know, this is something that uh, we are going to start to do also as well for yeah. Canary Islands. Yeah. So just uh, uh, out of curiosity, yeah. my city is asking. Yes, me. yeah. <laughs> 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 Maybe you want to provide something. <laughs> 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 uh, so yes, so I, I guess, you know, can you comment on this? I mean, the, I mean, the, the, what is the situation? I mean, within Europe, I, I think it's a no brainer to support a project like this, but, uh, but uh, what, what, what is your feeling? I mean, the whole, whole difficulty is to actually get uh, this international support from other European partners. That's a good one. Um, what I see is that, that everyone in the background is thinking about this already for a long time. Mm -hmm. and they want to support it and they see what is needed but making the step is really difficult and i think that the um the amount of funding that for instance was made available in the us those amounts are quite substantial right that is difficult in europe usually what we have in europe are uh, more patchy funds that we get from programs here programs there but i think that's why we need to connect to each other mm -hmm. uh, and 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 try to get more funding in all together um, I think in the end, people will start to see this, that it's needed to find support and get the funding there um, and, and, and work more together. But I, I really think we have to, you know, sit together more often and think about this and get people across the line <laughs> and, and start doing it. But it takes effort. I think it takes effort. Yeah. Yeah. We have a question here online by Heino Falke, please go on. Hi, um, nice to not see you, but you know, nice, nice that you are <laughs> there. Um, um, I just wanted to add something to what, what uh, Jose Luis said. Um, this the comp complementary aspect of, you know, Canary Islands and Namibia uh, also extends to the single dish science case. 
because you can cover, for example, you know, we're looking at transients um, detection, right? I mean, the, the first radio emission is first seen at millimeter waves and then later at, at centimeter waves. So the first chance to find a radio transient is in the millimeter regime. And with, with you know, having noise, and, you know, with, with both telescopes, you would have both hemispheres covered. Um, and so, I mean, there, there would be an, also an option to have programs which cover, you know, both, you know, the entire uh, globe or the entire sky, uh, and where one could 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 collaborate uh, in, in in using them, not not just in VOBI. And in terms of, of funding, I mean, it's true that uh, US has big funds. That's true, but the fact that we are small scale in in Europe is also okay because you know a telescope like this in the end can be funded nationally um with some european support but you know it, it is possible to do this and certainly of course if you you know have some synergies uh which save some money as well um and and uh, and so we we can we can do things while the americans plan big things we can do the little things and actually get as much impact in the end yeah, I agree. I totally agree, Heino. I think that uh, yeah, the, the, the funding situation is really completely different in Europe. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, yes, uh, you know, we only need to, I, I mean, even just these two new telescopes, one in Namibia and on the island, it could be a significant uh, impact uh, for, the, uh, for, for the most relevant science we want to do with the, in the EHP in the next year. So, like, you know, the, the, the added the user coverage. For uh, making movies of of, of Sarge, uh, it's going to be significant with this, yeah. just with these two new telescopes. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah. think uh, this will put uh, you know uh, Europe in on on a not the same but similar footing as uh, as the American yeah, yeah. part. That, yeah. So I I think this is yeah this is something that definitely uh, both projects uh, projects uh, should be uh, supported from the European part of the of the yeah, absolutely and and what you mentioned also about the the, um, the monitoring, yes, indeed, it's something that we have been also brainstorming. It's, I mean, now currently for the EHP, it's just, you know, it's 15 days a year. So yeah. what do you do with 350 with days? Exactly. So yeah. Definitely, we are, we are thinking of the same, same yeah. project. I, I was committed to market that also our partners in, in Canary Islands also want to do some uh, on, uh, on a full monitoring of the, of the, the full sky for removing of the polarization contribution to CMB. So this is another very interesting project. But obviously for us, uh, transient monitoring and VLDI monitoring, I mean, Canary Islands is going to be uh, I, uh, on the same, almost the same location as CPA. So yeah. just, uh, you know, as a, a, a telescope that can, you know, do simultaneous uh, observations of CPA sources. And, and and covering, as you said, high know the northern and southern hemisphere for any uh, you know transient events and, and, and monitoring of of blazars. I think this is this is fantastic. It's absolutely huge. Yeah. Yeah. Can okay. I add one more thing about the EHD? I think if if you think about possible extensions, my gut feeling is, you know, will you know at max four more telescopes. And so with those two, you're really, you know, you're halfway there or actually almost entirely there. And in fact, mm -hmm. if you would have, you know, Canary Islands, Namibia, you have South Pole, you have uh, the Iran telescopes, you can do mm -hmm. observations with just the European Africa time zone on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, this, this is just going to be the big pillar in the East. And that doesn't exist yet. I mean, there are lots of telescopes in the, in the Americas. But in the east, there's very little, and with those two telescopes, yeah. you really stand on two two legs. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay. This, there is another. Yeah, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Miguel Sanchez. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hello, Mark. It's um, uh, Miguel from from Miram, from Granada, Iran, Granada. Hello. Um, hi. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, uh, well, first, first of all, congratulate for for this project. I think it's extremely interesting, and I wish you the best of success in your negotiation with uh, with Iran at Grenoble. <laughs> 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 so, um, so I, I have one comment and a couple of questions. 
first uh, uh, regarding regarding the uh, i saw your 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 weather statistics and 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 and, uh, and uh, for for in the current status of eht that uh, we uh, tend to tend to plan all the all the um, the runs in in by the end of march it, uh, yeah. it is uh, it is probably not the best uh, the best choice for you since the weather is rather poor in 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 that uh, so I, I i understand that you are more thinking on on the agile uh, this agile uh, approach that uh, that the, the this is not uh, there is no specific need of of setting up a campaign in in, in a definite uh, um uh, in in a in a very well defined in a very well defined uh, period of time, uh, yeah. since March is not is not the best for you, <laughs> I'm afraid. No. No. Yeah, no, no, I agree. I agree. March is not the best, but I've also uh, learned that that sometimes the weather in March could actually be okay-ish. <laughs> mm. I mean, uh, so so uh, over the last couple of years, I think it's <laughs> it was not so bad as as, as the, the statistics show that I had here. Mm -hmm. but yeah, you're right. March is not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and I have a couple. Of my, my two questions are first. There, I have a technical, just a technical question. Um, is it a plan to 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 use or, or um, uh, to uh, overhaul or to replace the receivers in the of the cest uh, for to to adapt to something more modern like uh, like Noema like or Noema type uh, receivers or uh, which is the plan well, I think for that, that? For the receivers, I think we the plan would be to 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 make new receivers um, uh, and not to reuse the ones that uh, I don't even know what kind of uh, actually now on assess, but uh, I don't think that was the plan. So so the thing that we want to reuse for the from the cest is really the the telescope or the dish itself, mm -hmm. and not so much the uh, the instrumentation. So you are planning to 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 use uh, Noema like uh, receivers? Uh... Yeah, that would fit, of course, the design. Yeah. And and any other kind of receivers would require uh, an, a modification to that design, which is yeah. also possible. You know, yeah. we have yeah. a, a group in the Netherlands that is also capable of making Alma type receivers. Uh -huh. yeah. So that would mean a, a design change, which is not you know impossible, but uh, yeah. yeah, it really yeah. also depends on the funding situation. I think. Okay. Good. And my, my second question is more more on the on the budget side. Uh, um, since you have uh, you have uh, talked about uh, implementation, but uh, what about operation? The, the funding for operation. This is a long term thing that uh, that will require. Are you relying on the local funding for 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 the operation? Uh, no. Uh, well, issue, maybe partly, yeah. Maybe, maybe partly, but actually, uh, it's a good point that you made. I forgot to mention, but uh, the, the significant part of the funding that the Radboud University is providing is actually for operations. So we have uh, funding available for five years of operations to support, let's say, the manpower effort needed for that and, and some of the hardware costs for maintenance. Uh, and the way we see this is that, that we would like to have uh, UNAM personnel uh, involved in that from the University of Namibia, or, or maybe people that, that get trained by us to do this. Uh, so that would be an additional in-kind contribution from the, from the country uh, to provide uh, that, that, that uh, operation uh, support. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. And, it, and, oh. it, and I have to say that the funding that we foresee for that operations is, uh, is, is uh, yeah, maybe we have to revise it again uh, because it's it, this is not going to be easy. I mean, in the end, it should be robotically operated. Uh, that would reduce some of those uh, uh, yeah, operational costs. But, uh, well, we all know, I think, that getting it robotically, you will probably not do it in one go, right? So that's on paper, it sounds really nice. But in practice, uh, that's uh, quite a challenge. Yeah. Just as a side note. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for your question. Okay, thank yeah, you. we have a question here. Oh, sorry. Can I come in? in the room? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, it's a, it's a very quick question. So um, you mentioned also AGN science with the uh, AMT, mm -hmm. and uh, we had these beautiful results uh, from the collaboration led by by uh, 
your institution at the Netherlands mm -hmm. uh, about the Centaur of Say. Yeah. Uh, and since the, the declination of the sword is it, it's really low, this this telescope could be a really nice addition yeah. to improve the imaging on the source. Have you made any predictions about how this um, uh, new uh, facility could uh, improve the imaging of the source? Uh, oh, that's a good point. Uh, I actually don't know whether we included that already in, in the anal analysis that we're doing uh, to see what is the effect of the AMT. Maybe Heino wants to comment on that. Did you got that question, Heino? If he's still there. Is he still there? Yeah. He's still there. But I'm not sure if he's listening. I, I, I honestly I don't know. I mean, but it's a good. I mean, it's, it's a good thing to do, right? Uh, yeah. if it will we, definitely improve. It improves yes. because in the whole yeah. thing, the MSP, yes. the MSP, so definitely yeah. it's going to improve it. Exactly, but I I don't know if we did that simulation. I don't no. think so, but I think it would be something we need to do. Yeah, yeah. it's a good point. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other question? Not on this side. <laughs> Not here okay. online, so maybe it's time to close the talk. Thank you very much, Mark, for this uh, wonderful talk, and hope you, you are enjoying Granada and all the people there. Uh, we do. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. <laughs>